Good to be in the house of the Lord. I'm excited to be here this evening. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for victory tonight. In the word, Father God, we thank you for your son, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, your only begotten son, to bind through him we have the victory. And we thank you, Lord, that knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, comfort, edification, and encouragement will come from your word tonight. And may it dwell in our heart, and may your word never return to you, Lord. It will accomplish, amen, what you have sent it out to do. And we thank you, Lord, that you will receive the glory and praise from the life that we live according to your word. We ask that you rebuke the devourer for our sake tonight, that we can hear your still, small voice, that we can have understanding and knowledge and wisdom, that our hearts and our minds will receive the word of God, and we will be doers of the word. We thank you in Jesus' name that the people of God say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good evening to each and every one of you in the house of the Lord and everyone who's watching, listening by social media. Thank you for tuning in. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 13. We're in uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. And it's expository teaching. Let your conversation, let your man of life the Apostle Paul is encouraging Jew and Gentile, you and I, let brotherly love continue and let your conversation be without covetousness, be without greed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our life, the life of a believer should not signify a, a greediness. Let your conversation, let your manner of life be without covetous or be without greed. And we are to allow, let brotherly love continue. Covetousness is a, is a sin of the heart, the root of the heart. Amen? I want to share with you before we go uh, uh, any further again, the scriptures on, amen, that uh, um, the heart, the condition of the heart and covetousness is of the heart. For out of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Amen? In Matthew 6, and 19. Let's get started. We have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. Matthew 6 and 19. Praise God. Covetousness is of the heart. Matthew 6 and 19, it reads, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt. You know, we left for ourselves treasures upon this earth, even though we came naked into this world. And naked we leave. Amen. We brought nothing into this world. We take nothing out. But we lay, the Bible tells us to lay not up for yourself treasures upon this earth. We work hard. We buy hard. <laughs> we purchase hard. Mm -hmm. But the word said, lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, where thieves break through and steal. Mm -hmm. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Seek those things above. For neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and when thieves do not break through nor steal, there will not be thieves and liars and amen. Those who are, 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 are who steal it in heaven, amen. amen. For where your treasure is, see, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So if your treasure, amen, is the things of this world, things of this earth, treasures of this earth, that's where your heart is. It's a heart issue. Covetousness, greediness is a heart issue of this earth. Amen? Amen. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where is your treasure? Mm. Examine yourself. Amen. Are we laying up treasures in heaven or treasures here upon the earth? Look at 2 Peter. Chapter Chapter 2, 2 Peter, chapter 2. Praise the Lord. Praise God, praise God. Let me... Amen, amen. Sins of the heart. Make sure I didn't write down the wrong verse. I think I did. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. 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 It's like I wrote down a wrong. Amen. First, I'm sorry. I said I'm looking for Second Peter two, and I'm sorry. First Thessalonians. That's what I'm looking for. Forgive me. First Thessalonians. And verse 2. Amen. And verse 5. First Thessalonians 2 and 5. Praise God. And it reads, verse 5, for the sake of time, the Apostle Paul is sharing about his ministry and how he, amen, preached freely without design, paid, Men, we pick up here in verse 5. For neither at any time use we flattering words. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Flattering words to those who flatter you with words to, amen, uh, uh, maneuver you out of your money. Amen? Mm -hmm. For neither at any time use we flattering words, as you know, nor a cloak of covetousness. See? He didn't come preaching with a cloak of covetousness or uh, greed. Why? Look at this in the verse. Because God is witness. Mm -hmm. God is witness. Mm -hmm. Let your life be without covetousness. Let your man of life be without covetousness. For God is witness. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? Yeah. Man looks on the outside, but, but God looks on the inside. And he looks at our heart. Amen. Is, it, is, a, is our heart a... Is, a treasure of, of things on this earth or a treasure of things in heaven. God is witness, Paul says. The condition of your heart, the desires of your heart. Amen? Yeah. Why you do what you do. Mm. Is that a covenant where God is witness? Yeah. You may fool some of the people some of the time, but we can't fool God none of the time. Yeah. For great is he that's in us than he that's in the world. He's in us. He knows the condition of our heart. Amen? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Let our lives be without covetousness. Why? Look at Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. And we'll pick up in verse 13. Luke 12 and 13. Let your man of life be without covetousness, without greed. Mm -hmm. Why? For Luke 12 and 13, and one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divides the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? Praise the Lord. Yeah. And he said unto them, Take heed. And beware of covetousness. Mm -hmm. Beware of greed. Those who have insatiable desire for money and possessions and building bigger barn. Because your life may be required of you tonight. Yeah. So take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consists, in, I'm sorry, consists not in the abundance of things which he possesses. Yeah. Your life consists not of the abundance of things which you possess. Amen? Yeah. And then he goes on to give this parable. About still laying up treasures in heaven. Let's read this parable. Verse 16. And the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where I bestow my fruits. I collect my fruit. And he said, this what I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, bigger. And there will I be stored, amen, and store all my fruits and my goods. And, and I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast many goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease. Eat, drink, be merry. But God said unto him, fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided. So is he that 
left up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Let us make sure we're not laying up treasures on earth, laying up treasure for ourselves, but let us make sure we're laying up treasure in heaven and be rich toward God. Amen. Are we rich toward God? Are we living a life today, amen, uh, that's rich toward God, amen? Working the works of God is a life that's rich toward God, amen? amen. Doing the purpose and will of God for your life is being rich toward God. Telling someone about the good news of Jesus is being rich toward God, amen? God or no man's nothing. He will not forget your work and labor of love. He will pay you. Yes. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Come into the house of the Lord. Yes. Ten cities, five cities. Who knows what the Lord has for us? Yes. But let's not be covetousness and, 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 and desire the things of this earth. Building bigger barns as though we're going to live here forever. As though this earth is going to be here forever. We're just pilgrims, we're strangers, we're passing through. Amen. We're going to have a new heaven and a new earth. Amen. Let us be rich toward God. Every day we should arrive. How can I be? What can I be? What can I do to be rich toward God? Amen? Amen. Jesus said, what you've done to the least of them, you've done it unto me. That's being rich toward God. Go set everything you have, he told the rich young ruler. Give it to the poor and come follow me. That's how you be rich toward God. The poor you will always have among you. Amen. 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 If you don't have any poor money, you better move. <laughs> you know, we try to move where there is no poor. We try to drive and live where there is no poor. We don't want to see any poor people. We don't want to see any homeless people. But Jesus said the poor will always be among you. And, and, and if, when you give to the poor, you lend to God. Yes. That's being rich toward God. Living and fulfilling his purpose in this earth. Amen. Amen. We are, for he is our witness. God is witness. Yes. Amen. Yes. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Mm -hmm. Let your life be without covetousness. Without greed. Romans 1 shares about the wrath of God against mankind, those who would not receive his salvation in Christ. So we'll begin in verse 1. Amen. He said, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. Amen but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened because that when they knew God, they knew God. Amen. Amen. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creepy things. Verse 24, wherefore God also gave them up. What did God do? He gave them up. Verse 25 says, Amen. Uh, what verse 24 says, they dishonored themselves, dishonored their body. Verse 25, they said, it says they changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and served the creature more than the cre creator. And verse 26 says, what? Well, and for this cause, God gave them up. He gave them up in verse 24. He gave them up in verse 26. Amen. Yeah. And then in verse 28, let's go down to verse 28. And even if they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over. He gave them up to a reprobate mind, to do those things which are not convenient or fitting or proper. Amen? So he gave them up to do those things which were not fitting or proper. And what are one of those things that were not fitting or proper? Let's see. Look at verse 29. And so that because God has gave, given them up to do those things which are not convenient, to do things that are not a fitting, a proper for man, being filled with all unrighteousness. These are the things that are, uh, amen, are not fitting, convenient, or proper, the Bible says. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness. Wow. Do you see that? Yes. 
When God give you up, when God give it to a reprobate mind, guess what? Amen. Guess what? I'm uh, uh, coming to your heart. Covetousness, greed, selfishness. Amen. Mm -hmm. When you know God and don't and don't glorify Him, and you you're not thankful, you become a fool, <laughs> and you begin to worship. Corruptible things made in the image of God. So God gave them up. And when God gives you up, what occurs is covetousness, greed, selfishness. Amen. Do you see that? That's one of the sins. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, greed. When God is not in your life, when you're not rich toward God, you're greedy toward the things of this earth and toward yourself. Amen? Mm -hmm. And I uh, going back to Hebrews 13 and 5, amen, let your life be without, amen, covetousness, yes. greed. The church of God, the people of God, we can't have a reputation in the community amongst those that, amen, the one that God desires to save, amen, the millions that God desires to save. We can't have a reputation of being greedy and covetousness. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, yeah. So what did God do? There are many other sins that I'm not going to read all of them. Go down to verse 32. Who knowing the judgment of God, they knew the judgment of God, that they would commit such things are worthy of death. They know the judgment of God, amen, because verse 21 says again, because that when they knew God, they knew God, who knowing the judgment of God, that they would commit such things are worthy of death. And that includes covetousness. Amen? Mm -hmm. Death? What death? Just physical death? No, a uh, 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 spiritual death. Separation from God eternally. Covetousness can lead to spiritual death. Amen? Mm -hmm. Greed. Building bigger bars when your soul is required of you tonight. When money and possessions and lands are your God. Amen? When you have changed the, uh, the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image, you know, your, your house, your building, your business, yeah. your possession is your God. Is your, amen. Yeah. But because that's when they knew God, they were filled with covetousness, who knowing the judgment of God, that they would commit such things are worthy of death. Yeah. Amen. Not only do that, I'm sorry, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. See, we can't have pleasure. They, they were, the, the saints were having pleasure in, in those who are coveting it and greed and, and robbing and stealing from their workers. I don't want to go back through all these verses again that speaks of this in, in James about the rich, amen, are, are robbing the poor and, and stealing their wages, amen. Yeah. We've, we've dealt with that with greed and covetousness. In 1 Timothy, the rich should be laying up their, their wealth. Amen. The Bible says in, in, in 1 Timothy uh, 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 chapter 6 that they have a, 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 a good report. Amen. Yeah. They lay up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come. Even the rich. Write it down, 1 Timothy 6 and 19. I, I want to read all these verses again. You can start in verse 17, read over to verse 19. Charge them that are rich in the world, that they be not high-minded, not trust in uncertain riches. Bitcoin. Gold, silver. <laughs> but in the living God. We trust in the living God. Yes. We are not, amen, uh, 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 seeking these things on the earth. But we trust in the living God, amen. Yes. God turned them over to a reprobate mind. But we trust in the living God, not in uncertain, uncertain riches, who giveth us rich in all things to enjoy. Who giveth us rich in all things to enjoy? God. But God also said, Jesus God, that is more blessed to give 
than to receive. Yes. Didn't Jesus God say that? Yes. And that they do good, that they be rich in good works. Amen. See? The rich supposed to do good, be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. They should be ready to, to share and communicate. The rich. And in so doing, when the rich share, they lay it up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come. What are they doing? They're being rich toward God. They're rich toward God. You may say, well, I'm not rich. You're richer than a lot of people. You're richer than most people. Amen? But are you willing to distribute? Are you willing to share? You don't have to be a multi-billionaire, multi-millionaire. Amen? Uh, to be uh, considered rich. You have more than, than, than others in your circle of life. Amen? But are you willing to distribute? Amen? That, that's what's in your power to share. Yes. Amen? Because if you share, you land up a, a store for yourself, a good foundation against the time to come. Because you never know when that time may come. When you need help. Yeah. And one thing money can't buy always is good help. Mm -hmm. You need a healing. Yes. Many rich people died in the same hospital like you died in. Mm -hmm. Same diseases and sickness mm -hmm. that we walk out of. Mm -hmm. Man died just like, if you go read the Ecclesiastes, the apostle, I'm sorry, Solomon said, we, we take our last breath just like the animals do. The rich and the poor. So lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. Yeah. A good foundation gets the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. That's the rich. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Remember, God, first Thessalonians, God is witness. God is witness of covetousness, covetousness in the heart of man. Amen? Yeah. Covetousness it's one of the Ten Commandments. So we're not to cover. We're not to cover our neighbor's house, wife, husband, possessions. Amen? Amen. We're not to be greedy. Deuteronomy 8 and 18. Go there. Those of us that, have, that do have excessive substance, like, uh, 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 over and above, God has blessed us. Amen? Mm -hmm. Let us understand, it is God. Right. Remember, the Lord God. It is he that giveth thee power to get well. Amen. Isn't that what the Bible says? Yes. He gave us power to get well. Praise the Lord. Let's read it. Deuteronomy 8. And 18. A lot of times we start reading it there. We need to read the entire verse. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 8 and 18. God gave us power to get wealth. Why? That he may establish his covenant. Amen? Mm -hmm. God gives you power. He's entrusting you and I. He's given us wealth to help establish his covenant. Not to be covetous and greed and hoard it all to ourselves. Amen? Mm -hmm. He has given us power to get well that he may establish his covenant which he swear unto the fathers as it is this day. Saying, let us be a channel. Let us recognize that God has given us power to get this well to help establish his covenant. Mm -hmm. We can share some of this wealth that God has given unto us. And, and when you share your wealth, people will allow you to, to share the one who gave it to you. They will allow you to talk to them about the Lord, about salvation, how good God is. What you're doing is you're helping, amen, God who's given you this well to establish his covenant in another person's heart. To encourage someone. Let's use our, our wealth, our suffering that God has given unto us, has uh, given us this power, given us these, uh, 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 this education, this, this intelligence, this wisdom, this, amen, that's from above, and amen. Whatever he's given unto you, he's given unto you to help establish his covenant. 
He didn't give us this power to get wealth just to build us, amen, a, a place to live, a place, something to ride in and, and to vacation and to, to wear and to eat, find restaurants. He's also given us this power, amen, to help establish his covenant. This power to get wealth, your job, your career, however, your business. God has given you that power, that authority to make this wealth, to help him establish this covenant. There are many in the, in the church of God, in the body of Christ that has businesses, amen, that have great careers and substance, amen, stored up in bigger bonds. But I'll be willing to share it to help establish God's covenant. If you don't have an opportunity to pray and ask God to show you, amen, don't be afraid. He'll show you someone. He'll show you a group that you can help establish his covenant with your will. First Chronicles 29. First Chronicles 29. We're establishing now that it's God has given us power to get this well. And we should be covetous about it. I'm with it. First Chronicles 29. And verse 11. First Chronicle 29 11, I'm reading. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power. This is uh, uh, David's prayer. And the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Did you hear that? David said, Everything in the heaven and in the earth is thine. It's yours, Lord. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. Amen. Everything belongs to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Even our body and our spirit belong unto him. Isn't that what the Bible says? Yeah. Look at verse, I mean, let's keep reading verse 11. For all that is in the heaven and the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Amen. Verse 12. Both riches and honor come out of thee. Where does wealth come from? Where does riches come from? Where does honor come from? It comes from the Lord. Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all, and in thy hand is power and might. And in thy hand it is to make great. See, God is the one who gives us power to uh, get wealth and to make us great. Amen? And, but also to establish his covenant. And thy hand is to make great and is to give strength unto all. Amen? Amen? And when we share the wealth, the greatness, the honor the, of God who's given us this power to get wealth, amen, we're giving strength unto all. Let us not hoard, amen, amen. What, what God has given unto us. Go to Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs 10 and 22. I'm establishing that it's God who give us power to get wealth. And we should not be covetous with what God has blessed us with. It's more blessed to give than receive. You know what the Bible says? We'll get there. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Let that sink in. Preach on that. Let us live like that. Amen? It's more blessed to give than receive. There's a lot of preaching on receiving. But the Bible says it's more blessed to give than receive. That's, that's how you store up treasures in heaven. Because Jesus became poor that we might become rich. He gave of himself that we might have eternal life. That we might be redeemed and restored to the Father. It's more blessed to give. And Jesus gave of himself. Surely we can give of these riches that he's given unto us. Amen? Amen. Proverbs 10, what did I say? 22. Proverbs 10 and 22. Listen. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. Do you see that? There's no need for us to be covetous full of covetousness. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. The Lord is the one who bless us. Yes. 
Let us not take that blessing and be covetous with it. Amen. So Jesus said, what you done to the least of them, you done it to me. Lord, when did we see you in jail and in prison? When did we see you sick and naked and, and in the hospital and visiting you? When you did it unto the least of them, you done it unto me. Amen. See? It make it rich. And he added no sorrow with it. See? God, the blessing of the Lord will make you rich and you have no sorrow with it. Amen? Amen. When, it, when it's truly a blessing from the Lord. Yes. Because you, you're going to do what's right with it. You're going to help establish his covenant. Mm -hmm. Therefore, there will be no sorrow with the riches because you're helping God establish his covenant. Right. Mm -hmm. Giving to the poor, needy, the fatherless, the homeless, the, the widows, the Bible says. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Ecclesiastes 11. No, we in Proverbs now? Mm -hmm. Yes. Let, let me do Proverbs. While we're here. Have a few verses. Let's go back to 13. Go to 13. Proverbs 13. Proverbs 13. And verse 22. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. And the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Mm -hmm. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. He's not holding it all up for himself or using it all up for himself in his lifetime. Mm -hmm. He's saving it for generations, amen? Generation of wealth. That's a good man. Mm -hmm. Now listen, let's keep reading. And the wealth of the sinner, the wealth of the wicked, is laid up for the just. But we haven't received it yet. The wicked still have it. It's laid up for us. But until we get in our heart, and God is witness of our heart, that we won't be covetous with it, when we, God, know that we will use the wealth of the wicked to establish his covenant, God will let us have it. The wealth of the wicked is still laid up for the just. But the just, but the wicked still uses it, amen, and their sins, amen. Because we who are the just, we must learn not to be uh, 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 covetousness, uh, full of covetousness, amen, and covet things because we'll just take that wealth from the wicked and we'll just, amen, spend it all on ourselves. It's laid up. God holding it. But God got to be convinced. God got to look in our heart and know that our heart is not full of, of covetousness. Amen? Amen? But it's laid up for you and I. If we just will understand that we can't let our man of life be with covetousness. Amen? Amen. Greed. If the Lord give us the wealth of the wicked and we are a greedy people. Amen? It will hurt us even more. Many have erred from the faith because of the love of money. But understand, God will take the wealth of the wicked. How did they come out of Egypt? With the wealth of the wicked. They came out of Egypt. I had a, I had a sermon many, many years ago. I, I, I've written it down, never preached it. Never preached it about the wealth of the wicked. They came out of Egypt <laughs> very rich. God had them laying up, amen, that wealth that they had in Egypt, they left with it all. Amen? And if the, you look at the, the, the battles that David won, amen, they, they left with all the riches. Joshua, the, the battles that Joshua won and David won, they left with all the riches. God had the riches laid up for the just. Amen? But we got to understand that we can't be covetous in our heart. Because when they came out of Egypt with the riches, Moses asked for them to give an offering, remember? Mm -hmm. To build a temple, to build the ornaments, the priestly ornaments, and the garments. They gave so much. Right? Didn't Moses have to stop them? Yeah. 
He told him, we don't need it anymore. I haven't been in a church like that yet. <laughs> because see, they weren't covered. They were, they, were, they were celebrating their deliverance. They, they witnessed the power of God that was demonstrated in their exodus out of Egypt. And it was time to give back to God. Amen. Their heart wasn't filled with covetousness. See, God loves a cheerful giver. God, amen, the Bible tells us that as a man purpose in his heart, so let him give. We, got like, we must learn to give willingly. Yeah. Hebrews 7 and 8 lets us know when we give, we give because it's a witness, it's a testimony that he lives. That's why you give, saints. Your, your giving is not just a tithe and, and, and a curse because that's not going to happen. Uh, uh, Jesus has delivered us from all curses, amen. But your giving is a testimony. It's a witness that he lived. You're saying, when I give to the house of God, this is a witness, this is a testimony. I'm proclaiming that Jesus lives as my high priest. Yes. Go read it. Hebrews 7 and 8. Read it. Hebrews 7 and 8. Never come again giving your money, your tithe, or whatever name you want to call it. Be concerned about a, a curse. No, you, I'm giving because my Savior, my Lord, my Deliverer, my God, He lives. And that's why I give. I'm not going to hoard saints. We hoard money. We, we, we are, we are, we, we cuff this with our money. Amen? I, I don't preach time because, amen, I don't want to limit you there. You tell a saint that's all you got to give, that's all a saint go give. But when you allow that purpose, that person to give what the purpose in their heart, amen, that God had them give over and above that. Amen. Because they love God and they know God is, amen, they're giving is a witness that he lived. And they'll rejoice when they come in to give into the house of the Lord because they're acknowledging that he lived. Yes. I want you to get that, saints. Proverbs 14. Verse 31, Proverbs 14 and 31. He that oppresses the poor reproaches his maker. Do you understand God makes the poor? The poor you always have with you. When you oppress the poor, when we are covetous, full of covetousness, and God is our witness, you oppress the poor, you reproach his maker. But he that honors him have mercy on the poor. When you honor the Lord, you'll have mercy on the poor. You won't covet. You will give to the poor when we want to honor our baker. Do you see that? But when you oppress the poor, you reproach God, the maker. But he that honors him, if you honor the Lord, you will have mercy on the poor. And that would mean sharing of your wealth that God has given us power to get. So if you want to honor the Lord, share with the poor. Somewhere in probably it says that when you give to the poor, you lend to God. Isn't that what the Bible says? Amen. And if you lend to God, why wow, owe no man nothing? Well, give it to the poor, you lend it to God. Amen. Don't be covetous when it comes to the poor. We like to give the people a, a, a good soul. Come and sow in good soul, good soul brother, good soul sister, good soul ministry. But see, we see you're a poor person. We, we, are, we don't been taught that must not be good soul. But the Lord says, when you give to the, you want to honor God, you give to the poor. That's good song. Not the rich, not all those of us who already have more than enough. Give it to the poor, it's honoring God. Give it to the poor. That's the good song. Because you're expecting nothing in return. Okay. Let me see the last 
give one. Go back to chapter 11, Proverbs 11. I'll skip one. Proverbs 11. Twenty-four, and we we'll read verse twenty-five. Proverbs eleven twenty-four and twenty-five, and it reads, "There is that scatter, and yet increases. When you scatter, mm -hmm. when you throw your seed out, you increase. When a farmer sows his seed and scatters the seed, he's expecting a harvest. He's expecting a return." There is that that scatters and yet increases. But when you are covetous, when you're full of greed and covetousness, you won't scatter. You won't share. You're selfish. There's that scatters and yet increases. And there's that withholding more than do, but it tended to poverty. To poverty. See, those who hoard and hold on to everything could end up in poverty. Those who build in bigger bonds, your life may be required of you. That's another way of saying it. You can end up in poverty. Amen? Now verse 25. Now the leper soul shall be made fat. And he that watered shall be watered also himself. Yeah. See? When we don't covet, but we scatter, but we have, it's going to increase. And when because we're watering others in our time of need, God said we will be watered. He will cause somebody to water to your life. Uh, the Lord will rain on you your, himself the early and the latter rain. Because you scattered, amen, his wealth to help establish his covenant. Now, in your dry season, amen, God will rain on you. But you got to scatter. You got to share. We can't covet and hold on to everything for ourselves. And make sure when you're scattering, you give to the good soil, the poor. You know, I work at a facility, for those of you who don't know me, and I thank God I work there. It's, it's some poor people there, amen, and I'm, I'm scattering all every day. I'm giving because I understand who they are. They're made in the image and likeness of God. It's all about value, how you value them, how you see them. If you see them just in those old, dirty, of garments they have on and not in the image of God, you won't sow, you won't give, you won't scatter. You won't honor God by giving to the poor. But I thank God, amen, anyone working in a facility, whether it's the needy, the poor, the hungry, the fatherly, those who have been forgotten by family, friends, and society. That's where I work. And that's why I work there so long, because there's such opportunity there to scatter, to, to, uh, to help establish God's covenant with the wealth he's given me. Praise the Lord. And I pray to encourage anyone who's listening that wherever you work, it's some poor there. Now they might now they might masquerade pretty good. They might dress up just like you. They might have their hair fixed, nails fixed, suit fixed, to walk around just like you because of peer pressure. But in due time, you'll find out God will put them on your heart. And when God puts someone on your heart, step up. Give to the poor. Don't hoard. Don't keep back. That's good soil. Okay. All right. The liver soul shall be made fat. We're in Proverbs 11, 25. And he that waters shall be watered also himself. Look at verse 28. Uh, Y'all know Solomon? Did he have was, did he have a lot of money? He had a lot of money. He was rich, wasn't he? Very rich. So Solomon, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he's able to teach us about wealth. <laughs> and he said in verse 28, Proverbs 11, 28, He that trusted in his riches shall fall. You trust in your riches. You trust in your retirement plan. You trust in your job and your career. You trust in your pension. You, you trust in your social security. You, you trust in the government. Whatever you trust in, you trust in your business and whatever you may have, your 401k. 
you're going to fall. Amen? Amen. Especially our saints, amen. It's a day coming when, amen, it's going to be one world government, one world religion, one world order, amen? Mm -hmm. And we may not be able to partake of that. And your riches are going to be tied up in a system you can't use. Amen? Mm -hmm. But you trust in riches. The Bible is he that trusted in his riches shall fall. And I don't think anyone was richer than Solomon. Amen. All right. We in Proverbs. Look, go to verse twenty, chapter twenty-two. Proverbs twenty-two. Proverbs 22 and verse 9. Proverbs 22 and 9. We're speaking on, I mean, uh, our, our man of life should not be covetousness. Our uh, uh, believers, saints of God, the church of God, the people of God, we should not have a reputation of being greedy. Covetousness, that's what that word means. Proverbs 22, what did I say, verse 9? He that hath the bounty for I shall be blessed. So he giveth of his bread to the poor. Amen. He that has a bountiful eye, bountiful eye shall be blessed, for he giveth of his bread to the poor. I told y'all the poor people is the good soil. Amen. We've been we've been tricked, we've been duped. <laughs> Not me. Because I, I read my Bible from cover to cover. But it's a lot of people been, been duped about what's good soil. It's the poor. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Not the ones who have more of this good. Oh, let me leave that alone. <laughs> it's the poor saints. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. In verse 1, Ecclesiastes 11, and verse 1. Well, let me back up. Go to chapter 5. Forgive me. Let's start in chapter 5. Let's do it right. Do it in order. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. And verse 10. 5 and 10. Let's read. He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver. Amen. See, you, 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 we, we, amen. Our man of life can be about covetous. Greedy, being covetousness. For he that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver. Amen. We see the world all the time, the rich, amen, take their own life because they unalive themselves, amen. I mean, we're wondering why, how. I wish I had that money. I'll show them what to do with it. See, the Bible says, he, he that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver. The only one that can satisfy you in this life is the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I don't care how much money and silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give unto thee. Isn't that, isn't that what Peter said? Yeah. And it's the Lord. Yes. He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver. Mm -hmm. Everybody who have a lot of money, we think they're just living their life. They just, they have, they divorce more than we do. Mm -hmm. With all that money. Because the richest man in the world got divorced last year, didn't he? Mm -hmm. He gave his by $70 billion and still was the richest man. <laughs> But we, we just designed to be rich and be millionaire and be in there. They, they're divorcing. Silver. He that loves silver shall not be satisfied with silver. And what the things that silver can buy. Let's continue. Nor he that loveth 
abundance will increase. Just by, you know, having a, a mansion in every state. We, we, they buying islands now. They buying islands now. You buy islands now. They, they, they're still not satisfied. Nor he that loves abundance will increase. This is also vanity. Y'all know who wrote uh, Ecclesiastes? Solomon, the richest man in the world. No, he said, he says foolishness. He had everything he needed, but at the end of his life, he says, all oh, vanity. It don't matter. You brought nothing into this world, naked you came into this world, and naked you shall leave. All right, now go to chapter 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 1. And the read, cast thy bread upon the waters. These are the instructions of King Solomon, the richest man in the world. He says, cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. See, share, don't covet. Don't be covetous. Don't be greedy. Don't hoard all things. He said, cast it upon the many waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Amen? It'll come back into your life when you scatter, when you sow seed. Give a portion to seven and also to eight. For thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. That seven, those eight people can now sow back into your life because you cast your seed upon the waters. And you reap what you sow. It's going to come back into your life. Amen? And we don't know the way of the Spirit. Says in verse 5. How the bones do grow in the womb of her that is a child. Even so thou knowest not the works of God who make it all. We don't know what God will do. When we scatter seeds. When we scatter seeds, you don't know what God will do and how God will bring it back into your life at the right time. So verse 6 says, in the morning, sow thy seed, and in the evening, withhold not thine hand, see? for thou knowest not whether shall prosper. Don't withhold your hand. Sow in the morning early. For thou knowest not whether shall prosper, either this or that, of which they both shall be alike good. Amen? So you scatter seeds. Some might grow, some might not, and who knows, you might get a hundredfold and all of them return to you. That's what he's saying. We don't know how God will do it. We don't, you can't explain how the bones grow in the womb. Amen? You don't know the way of the spirit and how it moves about in the wind and how it blows about. We know it blows. We can identify, but we don't really know how. But who blow in the wind? The wind blowing up, but who's blowing the wind? Amen? Amen. Give God a praise. Hallelujah. We got to learn to, uh, amen, to give. Go to Acts. I'm sorry. Let's go to, I'm skipping. I'm skipping. I'm trying to get there. Uh, Luke, chapter 3. We're addressing covetousness. And the Bible tells us in Hebrews, <laughs> let, let your conversation be without covetousness. Let your manner of life be without covetousness, without greed. Luke 3 and verse 10 and 11. And it says, he answered and said unto them, he that had two coats, let him impart. Let him give to him that has none. Do you see that? And he that has meat, let him do likewise. Amen. Then came also a publican to be baptized, and they said unto him, Master, what shall we do? He said unto them, Collect no more than that which is appointed you. Don't be greedy. Do you see that? Collect, exact, collect no more than that which appointed you. Praise the Lord. Let some people keep some of their seed. Sometimes I done been in church to take up three, four, five offerings. Exact no more than what appointed you. Yeah. 
Someone, you have two coats, someone asks for one, give them one. Amen? We have more than enough. Chapter 6, Luke 6. Luke chapter 6 and verse 30. Luke 6 and 30. Again, the Lord is speaking here. Give to every man that asketh of thee. And of him that taketh away thy good, ask them not again. That's not covered. The Lord will repay. He will replace. Give to every man that asketh of thee. And of him that taketh away that good, ask them not again. Amen? Look at verse 31. And as you would that men should do to you, do ye also like them likewise. Amen? The golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That's Amen? For if you love them which love you, we think what thing have you? See, when we love them that love us, when we show on in rich people, rich organizations, assuming that's good soil, the Bible says, what thank ye? What thank have you? They're already rich. They're already doing well. They're not in need, but we've been told that's the good soil. Neglecting the poor, the needy, the father, the hungry, amen? For if you love them which love you, what thank have you? You just the only person you get to is those who love you. For so sinners also love those that love them. You're not doing it. We're not doing anything as people of God when all we do is give to everybody who love us. We're not distinguishing ourselves as people of God when we only give to people who are within our family and within who love us. How about give to somebody who don't love you? Did did, uh, did God do that? Did Jesus do that? He came to His own. And it all received them not. They took Barabbas over Jesus. Amen? Yes. He came for us when the Bible says in Romans chapter 6, when we were without strength, when we were ungodly, we didn't love him, when we were sinners, we didn't love him, when we were at enmity against God. Jesus came, he became poor that we might become rich, amen? Jesus just didn't give to the alleged good soul. He gave to us sinners. He gave his best, he gave himself. Verse 33 again. Wait a minute, verse 32. For if you love them which love you, what thing have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. And you can prove that, you know how? When you were a sinner, didn't you love them that loved you? I most certainly did. I didn't think about church folk. I thought about, I thought about my sinner friends. But now that I'm in the church, I don't just don't think about church folk. I got to think about those who are still lost, amen? That's in the world without hope and without God. Verse 33, and if you do good to them, but do good to you, what they have ye? For sinners also do even the same. Didn't you do the same when you were a sinner? Well, we did good to each other. My buddies did me and I did my buddies. We did good to each other. But now that we are in the church of God, we got to do good to the ungodly. To those that are sinners. To those that are at enmity against God and without strength. Like Jesus did. He goes on to say in verse 34, and if you lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what they have you? You've done nothing special. For sinners are also lend to sinners to receive as much again. Verse 35, but love your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. Yeah. See, that's, that's uh, uh, having a man of life uh, that's not of covetous. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Love your enemies. And do good, live, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great. See there? Amen. And you shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. God, amen, he's, un, he's kind to the unthankful and to the evil. Amen? amen. How, how can we prove that? Because when you were evil, he was kind to you. 
When you look back on your life, when you was lost and in this world, without God, without hope, and you look back and you say, you know what, that was God being kind to me when I was evil. When I was unthankful and evil, God was still being kind to me until he drew me in. And we as people of God, we must be channels and avenue for God, the ambassador for Christ. Amen. With this well, we need to be, amen, kind to those who are unthankful and evil also. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. God is witness to our covetous heart. And now what the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 5. God is witness. Our men are life. It's to be without covetousness. What did I say? Acts chapter 2. And we know this passage of scripture very well. Verse 44. We know the Holy Spirit came down at Pentecost. Amen. Let's start at verse 44. And, and all that believed were together and had all things common. See, when the Holy Spirit is amongst the saints and the people of God, We'll be all together and all common. Amen? Mm -hmm. And they sold their possessions and their goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. They wasn't covetous. When the Spirit of God is amongst God's people in abundance, overflowing. Amen. We will share amongst one another. The scripture is not saying that everybody in the church got to go sell everything they have and give it all to each other. No, but when the Spirit of God is in abundance in the house of God and in the peace of God, we will, we will share with one another, amen? And everyone have need. And they continue daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. See? Sharing amongst one another. Not having a spirit of covetousness. A heart of covetousness. For God is our witness. Let's go on. Amen. Uh, chapter 4 again. Chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. That was another example of the church. It says in verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken. For they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. Amen. They're having a great prayer meeting. But let's drop down to verse 34 for a second time. Hmm. Well, let's, I want to read verse 33. I like verse 33. And with great power gave the apostle witness for the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. I like that. And a great grace was upon them all. And neither was there any among them that lacked. See? Because they, they, their, their manner of life was, wasn't about covetousness. They didn't covet. Neither was there any among them that lacked or were in need. For as many as were possessors of land or houses, they sold them and brought the price of the things that were sold. And about the, and they laid them at the apostles' feet and they distributed as it was needed. Amen? Acts 20, 35. Acts 20, 35. Paul farewell speech to the Ephesians. He spent three years there with the Ephesian saints. In the farewell speech, he says in verse 35, he says, I have showed you all things, how that so laboring you are to support the weak. Do you see that? In his farewell speech to the Ephesian saints, I have showed you all things how that so laboring you are to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. You are to do what? Support the weak. How that so laboring you are to support the weak, the poor, the needy, the fathers, the homeless, the widows, and to remember the words, not the Apostle Paul words, the words of the Lord Jesus. How he said, it is more blessed to give than receive. First John, and we are in here. 
chapter 3. We are in here. Praise God. First John chapter 3. And verse 16. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Amen? First John chapter 3 and verse 16. Hereby perceive we the love of God. Hereby perceive we the love of God. Because he laid down his life for us. That's how we perceive the love of God. He laid down his life for us and we are to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso has the world's good and sees his brothers have need and shut up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? Think, if we see our brother have need, there's no way we can shut up our bowels of compassion. We got to have a heart of mercy, amen? For him, for our brother, for our sister. If not, how dwelleth the love of God in him? Amen? My little children, let us not love in word. Saints, church of God, people of God, body of Christ, let us not love in word only. Amen? Amen? Neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. But in action and in truth. Let us not uh, allow, you know, let your conversation be without covetousness. But let us love in deed and in truth. Amen. Good God, I praise. I'm going to stop there in the name of Jesus. Amen. God is good. I thank God for you tonight. I pray that you have been blessed by the word of God, by the spirit of God. And God has, amen, brought forth these truths to us tonight. And we are to live them out. Amen. Praise the Lord. I thank God for you. I pray that, amen, again, that we will remember that, amen, that we will always have the poor among us, and the poor is good soul. Yes. Amen? Let us not have our man of life be about covetousness, for God is our witness. Amen. Let us lay up treasures in heaven mm -hmm. where God resides. Amen? Mm -hmm. Where God resides. But that's our destination. That's our point of contact. It's with the Lord. And I'm looking forward to being there. And I'm looking forward to hearing, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Don't allow covetousness to hinder us. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for the word tonight. We thank you for the power and demonstration of your Holy Spirit. And we give all praise and honor and glory to you, Lord. Without you, we could have done nothing. For your name's sake, for your word's sake, for your people's sake, we thank you, Lord, tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.